All right, well, hello everybody, and uh, we are almost together again. So, uh, really hoping that this uh, is the last all virtual meeting we'll have, and looking forward to seeing you all in person once again very soon. <laughs> Next slide. All right, so how has our outreach and, and external relations uh, progressed? And uh, despite the pandemic, um, we have had a lot of opportunities to further this, albeit not in person, uh, but it, it gave enough time to really reach out to maybe some new uh, opportunities and, and groups. So uh, we continue to be working toward proactive engagement with the broader Earth observations community and identify you know, real contributions to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Sendai Framework targets and indicators, as well as working with external partners for capacity building and development initiatives. And when we uh, engage externally, we want to make sure that uh, GIGOS is known for uh, advocating for interoperable, discoverable, and openly available geospatial data, promoting infrastructure development and contributing to the develop of effective capacity building initiatives. And this is all to ensure that geodesy is visible, valued, and a sustainable worldwide asset. Next slide, please. So what does this really look like in terms of the different ways that we ex engage externally? Uh, one being advocacy that uh, GIGOS and sometimes often through IAG, participates in diverse stakeholder organizations to identify the synergies and make connections across organizations in the name of geodesy as well as in mutual benefit. A lot of times some of these organizations aren't uh, familiar with how a stronger presence of geodesy can actually help their organization and, and, and add to a new level of benefit. Uh, collaboration uh, that we participate GIGO's participation in diverse capacity development efforts serves as kind of a human reference frame to link between organizations for otherwise overlooked opportunities. You know, how do we make sure that we can raise a hand and say, check out what Geodesy can do? Uh, sustainability, uh, you know, as, as many of us have talked about for many years, uh, we don't know where the next generation of geodesists are. We're always looking to engage with people who would like to be, join us in our geodesy community and, and thinking about how we can use our external relations to, to help us make sure that we are reaching out and, and being inclusive of next generation and new geodesists. And finally, visibility. Uh, as we've heard sometimes that geodesy can sometimes be overlooked or forgotten even. And how do we make sure that Earth observation organizations are reminded of the importance of geodetic infrastructure and data and, and its applications for very pressing current issues such as climate change and disaster risk reduction. Next slide, please. Okay, so digging a little bit deeper into the advocacy uh, thing, we have been engaging with these organizations, the Group on Earth Observations, the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, of course, the UNGGIM and, and the Subcommittee on Geodesy, as well as the, as the regional groups, as uh, Miyahara-san noted. Uh, and also, uh, as John uh, just spoke about, we've been working with the ITU focus group on uh, artificial intelligence for natural disaster management. Uh, now, we could, uh, I could spend a lot of time going into uh, each of our, our activities with this, but in the interest of time, uh, just touching on some high points with the Group on Earth Observations uh, through the Working Group on Disaster Risk Reduction, we're able to connect with uh, po policymakers as well as uh, other representatives of governments who may not be aware of, of geodesy's impact in, say, disaster risk reduction. They, they might think of it purely from a mapping or a positioning standpoint, uh, but to be able to understand that there's also potential benefit uh, outside of traditional applications and how they can then take this information back to their their government and advocate for a stronger presence of geodesy or, or more funding for improving or developing uh, geodetic infrastructure and capacity. Uh, through the Geodesy for Sendai community activity, 
uh, we're really linking in the policy with the technical aspects and we've been able to uh, make some really interesting progress uh, in, in collaboration with the International Telecommunications Union's efforts. Uh, within the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, again, another important uh, complementary organization. They work in close collaboration with GEO and, and they're also digging a little bit deeper into supporting the use of satellite geodesy for understanding disasters and making sure that uh, we are connected in with, with broader Earth observation satellite capacity building initiatives. Uh, the UNGGIM subcommittee on geodesy, I, I, I won't go into too much depth because I know that it was going to be discussed later on in the agenda, uh, but we, th we think about how uh, GIGOS and IAG can be an important collaborator with uh, the subcommittee and especially the future uh, Global Geodetic Center of Excellence, how we can make sure that uh, we're providing all the, uh, the guidance, advice, and uh, participation that, that this uh, growing organization needs. Uh, and finally, the ITU focus group on AI for natural disaster management. Uh, one thing that, that John touched upon is that sometimes it's hard to uh, share this data and we saw that even in the um, the Honga Tonga incident that our colleagues in Tonga were very happy to share whatever data they had but the uh, the major cable to Tonga was cut during the event uh, so how do we look at different ways of sharing the information derived from geodetic data in this case specifically um, real-time or near real-time GNSS data uh, in situations where there might be very low bandwidth or in, or also in situations where maybe a, uh, a country or territory is not able to share raw real-time data but could potentially share the information from that. And uh, one thing that this group is, is really looking at is how could we set up, say, a, a decentralized processing system with these black boxes that ha are fueled by artificial intelligence and machine learning so that GNSS data could be analyzed domestically and that the important element that we want to get from it, the disaster information, the warning, the uh, the, the real life saving information, how that could potentially still be exported. And so that's a, that's a long work in progress, but this is an example of how we can take uh, the, the technical uh, problems and look to our external partners for new and innovative ways of advocating for it and potentially finding novel solutions. Next slide, please. So as I said, we're collaborating uh, on a lot of things and this includes things like capacity building, capacity development. Uh, our colleagues at CIOS have been working on something called EOTech DevNet, which is uh, a very long acronym, but basically boils down to a centralized forum and resource resource portal for capacity building. And through our work with both CIOS and GEO, specifically in the, with the GEO uh, Capacity Development Working Group, uh, we are making sure that we identify opportunities for geodesy to plug into this. So say one, one day when we want to make certain geodetic capacity development resources available and findable, uh, that we can use this, use our um, external relations as an avenue to contributing to this larger network uh, rather than rebuilding something all ourselves. Uh, and hopefully it also helps people who would not normally see uh, geodesy as a resource uh, available that they can find it and they can uh, find new ways of innovating with our, our data and our organizations. And next slide, please. Again, touching upon the, the sustainability, how do we make sure that uh, we are being inclusive and um, really fostering and encouraging the next generation of geodesists, or even you could say the, 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 the geodesy uh, enthusiasts. <laughs> so one thing that we've been doing with the Group on Earth Observations is uh, via our uh, uh, representation of the International Association of Geodesy on their, on their program board, uh, we've been looking at uh, how are they addressing equality, diversity, and inclusion 
at a broad Earth observations organizational level. And uh, we've been able to serve as a co-author on the GEO statement on equality, diversity, and inclusion, uh, which includes this uh, five pillar framework in the graphic you can see on the right uh, it, of oversight and accountability, uh, community leadership and advocacy. How do we make sure that we're creating a welcoming and supportive environment? Outreach and engagement to underrepresented uh, regions, communities, uh, and disciplines, and empowerment through accessibility. And so this is one thing where, uh, by, via our work with uh, GEO on the program board level, we can then take this back to our organizations and say, how do we make sure that Geodesy is really uh, benefiting from this overarching efforts for diversity and inclusion? And how, do, how could we use this as a potential tool to help grow uh, organizations such as GEGOS? Next slide, please. And so uh, finally, visibility. And I think that this is this is really key because geodesy can sometimes uh, f slip through the cracks, as we would say, or, or be taken for granted. And we've been working with some of our uh, external uh, collaborative organizations to identify opportunities for geodesy to be represented in their their publications and in their works. And so, in the case of the World Meteorological Organization. Uh, now, we talk about the ITU group because it's, uh, it, it's a very long name, but it's actually uh, in, it's International Telecommunications Union together with the World Meteorological Organization and the UN Environment Program. And so as part of that collaboration, uh, we were able to, to include mention of geodesy in a, a recent WMO bulletin talking about the use of artificial intelligence for disaster risk reduction in a lot of different applications. And so this is something where people who might be interested in this in a much broader scope and read this article and see, oh, hey, I didn't even know there was an international association of geodesy. And, and hopefully this uh, inspires them to learn a bit more about us. And, and it's something that make, we make sure that the, all the work that is being done uh, within the IAG and specifically within GIGOS is uh, identifiable and visible and, and hopefully in inspiring future participation and, and collaboration and contributions. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, through the, the group on Earth Observations uh, community activity, Geodesy for Sendai, uh, we've had a lot of really strong support from their disaster risk reduction coordinator uh, at the Geo Secretariat in Geneva, and uh, we were actually one of the very few uh, Geo Program Board activities that were featured in their highlights report in 2021. And so this was an interesting exercise because they, they wanted to uh, really communicate the value of, of geodesy to the Earth Observations Applications community. Uh, and it also sparks the idea of how can we make sure that we're communicating this at a level that our Earth observations applications colleagues can understand. Uh, a lot of times we speak in very technical uh, language that is uh, easily understood by fellow geodesists, but maybe it, it's a bit more difficult for people outside of our field to, to understand. And looking at this, how can we uh, approach this in what's called like a policy brief, which would be kind of a one or two page summary, very high level, uh, and enough that somebody who is a politician, a, a decision maker, can understand and appreciate why this is important and why they need to uh, support it. And, and this is a kind of a, a similar in nature to what the uh, the GGIM subcommittee in Geodesy do, is doing with its newsletters. Next, please. And uh, finally, John mentioned the GAR report, the Global Assessment Report on Disaster Risk Reduction. And this is a very substantial publication that's put out by the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. Um, it's a very long document, uh, and it's very difficult to get papers in ac accepted to this document. It covers all manner of uh, applications to disaster risk reduction, and it's intended to really guide a lot of a very high level policy and information um, about 
pretty much anything that's going on with disaster risk reduction efforts and especially novel uh, applications. And w in addition to the uh, tsunami early warning applications that were featured in the 2019 GAR, uh, we've worked with the IGS uh, to have a, tw a 2022 contribution. Uh, and I, I, if I can quote from the, from the text of the GAR, uh, th that they're talking about how approaches building on previously unused or underutilized technologies and are applying them with new data to contribute to an improved transdisciplinary understanding of disaster risk. And then they go into the example that we gave of uh, global navigation satellite system radio occultation uh, to, to use that for novel ways of monitoring air quality in the events of wildfires or other, other situations and that that in turn will serve as a a really specific contrib contribution of geodesy to the sustainable development goals, uh, specifically uh, goal 11, uh, talking about a, um, air quality and, and particulate matter in the atmosphere. And so again, looking at how can we how can we make sure that geodesy is known and and leveraged and celebrated in new and and potentially really life saving applications. Uh, next, please. All right, so uh, we could go on and on about this, and, and I really do look forward to discussing this more in, in person when we have longer meetings. Uh, but moving forward, we continue to um, advocate for more ways of tracking geodetic indicators to the sustainable development goals, as well as the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. Uh, we want to make sure that we're, we continue to engage in new opportunities to enable and diversify geodesy's co contributions and this includes, if any of you, or if you know somebody who would like to be more involved with this, please, please, we are, uh, the, the external relations uh, efforts are um, always happy to have more contributors and more people involved in it. So please uh, contact Martin or or me if, if you would like to be more involved in this. Uh, it's the more the merrier. <laughs> and, and, and finally, just looking forward to really supporting uh, taking all of this that we've done to help support the establishment of the UN Global Geodetic Center of Excellence. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have for you. Uh, please reach out if you have any interest or uh, if you'd like to participate in this or if you have an idea or, or even if you think it's a little uh, kind of um, unconventional, uh, we're really having some some really great progress in making sure that geodesy is visible and supported and not only in the traditional applications but also finding uh, new and interesting ways of col collaborating with broader earth observations to to really make sure that uh, geodesy is out there and and used and appreciated and uh, really celebrated okay well thank you so much and i'll take some questions if you have them Allison, uh, this is John Lebrecht. Um, <clears throat> we've been thinking of the ITU largely in terms of artificial intelligence because uh, that's how they approached us. Um, but um, in terms of disaster risk reduction on a regional and global scale, communication is essential. As you pointed out, Tonga uh, was cut off from communications uh, during uh, the uh, Hunga Tonga event. I know that the ITU deliberations can be very complex, but um, uh, what do you think of the possibility of the IT of working with the ITU to encourage, especially the uh, 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 space-borne internet? systems uh, to allow the connections of uh, the numerous uh, nations and islands of Oceania within a uh, integrated network uh, so that we can monitor uh, the GNSS uh, receivers. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea. And, and I think ITU is, a, is an interesting forum to keep in touch with on that because they do, uh, our involvement is in one one small 
a segment of a much broader organization. And I do know that in other sectors, they are looking at things like making sure that uh, uh, frequencies are protected uh, and to a lot different types of uh, collaborative uses of, um, of other telecommunications resources. So uh, it was an element in our proposal to the ITU uh, to establish this topic group on uh, geodetic enhancements for tsunami early warning that uh, in addition to looking at the, the black box concept that I, I just spoke about for decentralized processing, that, that we're also looking to make sure that we find uh, better ways of ensuring access to this information uh, to uh, remote or cut off or otherwise uh, underserved uh, areas that are um, you know, experiencing uh, difficulties with their, their connectivity and infrastructure. So it's definitely something that I think has opened the door to, to further explorations of that. Yeah, I, it would be extremely important to get that door opened as quickly as possible. Right. 